Thanks for tuning in to Sims Workshop. I hope you are all having a wonderful day. So today we're going to be reviewing Seven Faceless Saints. First of all, I just want to note by saying I got this book with my Fairy Loop box, and I'm still waiting for Fairy Loop to announce the sequel, Disciples of Chaos. Come on. Chop. Chop, chop. Now, to the review itself. This was honestly a really good book. I, I liked it more than I thought I was going to. I don't think the cover does it justice but after you read it you're like okay the cover makes sense to what the book is about like it makes sense um but it's like intense like i mean you saw the cover in my thumbnail it's a little bit intense the cover but it's very stark and i really did enjoy it a lot you have two characters two point of views you've got roz and damien and they're on kind of like two sides of the coin so roz um, in this realm, you know, there are saints, gods, kind of, and they occasionally bestow people with, you know, magic power. Roz is one of those people, but she tested late. And not that she tested late, but the first time they tested her, they're like, okay, you have no magic. So you're just going to be one of the ordinary people, you know, in the town. There's a lot of unfairness when it comes to the society as a whole. I like that. You know, I think it offers a lot of depth to the storytelling. And Ross, she sees it because she was on the other side. You know, she was one of the just um, unfavored people, so to speak. She, um, pardon me, she didn't have magic for a long time and then all of a sudden you know with her father's death it's like an awakening for her and so now she sees the other side you know how privileged how spoiled they are she's like this is unfair like just because i have magic doesn't make me better than everyone else that's out there so she's really trying to challenge the system and she has a lot of pent-up rage in her because her father went to the war and he was considered a deserter and what happens to deserters well they are executed not only was he executed they sent his, her people, her people, executed him. And not only that, they sent his head in a box to her and her mother. Like, what the hell? Yeah, she's pissed. It was one thing for them to, like, kill him because of, he was a deserter. It's another thing entirely. It's just like, you're rubbing salt in the wound. So she is angry. She is a fierce, formidable, angry woman here. And what's worse is her childhood friend, Damien, didn't reach out to her. And what makes that worse is he was on the platoon with her father. And to just make it even worse, his father is the one who ended up killing her father. You know, these two guys who were supposed to be the best of friends, his father just executed him with, without a thought. So Roz is pissed. It's like, first, your father is the one who killed my father. Two, why didn't you check on me? We're supposed to be friends. And you know, I get, I get his side of the story. He's just like, I didn't think you wanted to hear from me. She's like, it killed me thinking you were dead. It killed me thinking that you were responsible. And in a way, he is responsible because he's the one who reported her father missing. He, he was worried. He reported it out of, you know, concern. He's like, I'm worried something happened to him. Um, and then, you know, they discover everything. So he is carrying a lot of guilt. He thinks he's undeserving. And he also sees the, because he is unfavored, so he sees the unjust in the world as well. And he's trying to make it better legally, you know, using his, you know, um, position of power. But when they both come ahead, when they come together to start investigating these mysterious murders, whew, that tension between them is so, these are enemies now. They are not friends anymore. So this is an enemies to lovers story. And I do like when an enemies to lovers story is done really, really well. Because it's not just like, oh, we're enemies. There's a lot of history. There's a lot of baggage to give that enemies to lovers trope more than just making it a trope. It's like, they went from being childhood friends to him kind of abandoning her to them having to work together and, you know, they hate each other. Again, her father is dead and he is unfortunately responsible and she knows it. So it, it's just, 
it's a lot of tension. It's a lot of hate because she also hates the system. It's, the system is wrong. The system killed her father. I mean, they sent her his head to her in a box. Pretty much broke her mom's mind. I mean, holy crap. That's, whew. So, when you learn that Roz is part of this underground rebellion, and you're just like, oh, this is cool. She's a girl who carries a knife around in her boot. You don't mess with her. You just don't mess with her. But I love that tension between them. I love that as much as there is a lot of this angst between them, because they are technically enemies at the moment, you still see that lingering childhood affection between them. And you're seeing it blossom. And you're seeing the ca characters wrestle with himself because he thinks he's undeserving of her. She kind of hates him. And it's just, it's a whole lot of tension in there. And it's really well done. I like when it's real, well done. I like when it is captivating, when it is, whew, it's just like, between these two, you're just like, oh my God, you guys really hate each other, but y'all really love each other. It's, it was really well done. And then the story has a lot of, you know, kind of political undertones as well as religious undertones. It does make it a point for a discussion because you have to challenge the system and you have to challenge not just that, but also the way religion plays a part in the system and how everyone who has a gift given to them by the saints is considered to be almost next to godly and they're spoiled and they're treated really well. And then you have the militia. There's a lot of go going into this world building, but it has a lot of layers and it has a lot of depth to it. So I really enjoy that, the storytelling, the mystery, the seventh, um, that chaos, the reveal for the disciple of chaos, that was so well done. It was just an expertly told story. I'm very excited to read book two. Very little, you need to hurry up and give me this book two already so I can read it. Because I don't want to have to go to the store and buy my own copy. I just want to read a nice pretty copy. Please and thank you. So in any case, excellent book, highly recommend, four out of five stars. Um, especially if you like the enemies to lovers trope, definitely pick this one up. You will not regret, regret it. So once again, four out of five stars. Thanks again for tuning in to Sims Workshop. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with all your book-learning friends. And on that note, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, happy reading.